Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to be here today to share one of my favorite spooky books with you. It's called The Wolves in the Walls by Neil Gammon, and the pictures are by Dave McKean. And um, you can see this girl here. We'll find out more about her, Lucy, in just a moment. And uh, she's convinced that there's wolves in the walls of her house. And we'll find out if they're really there or not in just a moment. Um, but I wanna get you thinking about a couple of things before we start. I know that we've been introducing a local species before every library class and they've been bringing us our library message. We, of course, last time talked about this one right here, the Black Widow. And many of you asked, what does the male of this species look like? Because this one is the female with the iconic hourglass shape on the abdomen. So um, I found some pictures. This is the male redback spider, which is the male um, of the Black Widow species. You can see that she is much bigger than him. He is a brown color. And I printed this picture as well, because on the abdomen, you can see this kind of like tiger striped marbleized pattern. Um, on him. So much smaller, uh, much less venomous. And this is what the male black widow of the species looks like. And he says, I'll use my spider voice for this. Hello, first grade. Today we will talk about this saying. What do you think this saying means? Now we hear sayings all the time. Our parents say them um, and we don't always know what they mean. And Lucy's parents are going to say this particular saying right here over and over again. Um, so I wanna have it rolling around in your head and find out what you think it might mean. And the saying is, if the wolves come out of the walls, then it's all over. Yeah, have adults ever said sayings like that to you before? Where do these sayings come from? And what do they mean? If the wolves come out of the walls, then it's all over. What's all over, right? Okay, be thinking about that and what that saying might mean as we read today's book, The Wolves in the Walls. All right, turn your thinking eyes on because you're reading the pictures while I am reading the words. All right, friends, here we go. This is the Wolves in the Walls, written by Neil Gammon and illustrated by Dave McKean. Now, this little uh, terry cloth pig puppet is going to be very important. It's Lucy's most beloved snuggly possession. And the strawberry jam will make an appearance too. Her mother makes that jam. The Wolves in the Walls. And here we see a tuba in the background. Lucy walked around the house. And do you see some wolves on this page? Uh-huh. Inside the house, everything was quiet. Her mother was putting homemade jam into pots. Her father was out playing, her father was out at his job playing the tuba and her brother was in the living room playing video games. Lucy heard noises. The noises were coming from inside the wall. They were hustling noises and bustling noises. They were crinkling noises and crackling noises. They were sneaking and creeping and crumpling noises. Anybody have a guess about what those might be? Lucy knew what kinds of things made noises like that in the walls of big old houses. And she went and told her mother. There are wolves in the walls, Lucy said to her mother. I can hear them. No, said her mother. There are no wolves in the walls. You must be hearing mice, I suppose. Wolves, said Lucy. I'm sure it's not wolves, said her mother. If the wolves come out of the walls, then it's all over. What's all over? Asked Lucy. It, said her mother. Everybody knows that. Lucy picked up her pig puppet doll, which she'd had since she was a little, little baby. I don't think it sounds like mice, she said to her pig puppet. In the middle of the night, when everything was still, 
she heard it. She heard clawing and gnawing, nibbling and squabbling. She could hear the wolves in the walls plotting their wolfish plots and hatching their wolfish schemes. Do you think she's just imagining this? She looks really worried and she seems sure that she's hearing it. Well, in the day, Lucy felt eyes upon her, watching from the cracks and from the holes in the walls. They peeped through the eyes of paintings. She went and talked to her father. There are wolves in the walls, she told him. I don't think there are, Poppet, he told her. You have an overactive imagination. Perhaps the noises you heard come from rats. Sometimes rats get in big old houses like this. It's wolves, said Lucy. I can feel them in my tummy and Pig Puppet thinks it's wolves as well. Well, can you tell your pig puppet, began her father. And then he said, why am I asking you to tell her anything? She's a puppet. And Lucy patted her pig puppet's head so he, she wouldn't be offended. Anyway, you know what they say about wolves, said her father. Do you know what they say about wolves? If the wolves come out of the walls, it's all over. Who says that, says Lucy. People. Everybody, you know, said her father, and he went back to practicing his tuba. <laughs> she was drawing a picture when she heard the noises again. Look at that eyeball through the hole in the wood. A scrambling, rambling, rustling in the walls. There are wolves in the walls, she told her brother. Bats, said her brother. You think it's bats, she asked. No, he said, I think you are. And he laughed for a long time at his own joke, <laughs> although it had not been a particularly good one. I am not bats, said Lucy. I'm telling you, there are wolves in the walls. Firstly, there are no wolves in this part of the world, her brother told her. And secondly, wolves don't live in walls, only mice and rats and bats and things. And thirdly, if wolves come out of the walls, it's all over. Says who, asked Lucy. Mr. Wilson at my school, said her brother. He teaches us about wolves and things. And how does he know, asked Lucy. Everybody knows, said her brother. And he went back to doing his homework. So no one believes her. Hmm. The next day, the noises were louder. We have to do something about those mice, said her mother. Pesky rats, said her father. I'll call someone up about them in the morning. Oh, it's bats, I know it is, said her brother happily. I shall ensure that I sleep with my neck exposed tonight in case one of them is a vampire bat. And then if it bites me, I shall be able to fly and sleep in a coffin and never have to go to school in the daytime again. But Lucy did not think it was mice or rats or bats. She shook her head at this sad display of ignorance. And then she cleaned her teeth and she kissed her mother and father and she took herself off to bed. The old house made no noises that night. I don't like it, Lucy told her pig puppet. It's too quiet. But soon enough, she closed her eyes and she was fast asleep. In the middle of the night, there was a howling. Oh, a yowling, yo, 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 a bumping and a thumping. And you know what's about to happen, don't you? The wolves came out of the walls. You know what this means, friends. Yeah, uh, it's all over, right? Maybe the book will end after this page. The wolves are out. It's all over. That's what the saying says. Should we turn the page and find out if it's all over? <gasps> oh no, shouted Lucy's mother. The wolves are coming out of the walls, shouted Lucy's father, picking her up and running down the stairs with her and his best tuba in his arms. It's all over, shouted her brother as he fled down the stairs beside them. And the family went out the back door and into the garden. And they huddled at the bottom of the garden that night. 
the lights were on in every room of their house. And they knew the wolves were watching their TV and eating the food from the family pantry and dancing wolfish dances up the stairs and down again. Oh, oh, oh! Ugh, poor family there at the bottom of the garden. Lucy was right. We should go and live in the Arctic Circle, said Lucy's father, where the houses are made with walls of ice and snow, and there's nothing but polar bears and seals for hundreds of miles. When the wolves come out of the walls, there's nothing else you can do. Humph, said Lucy. We must go live in the Sahara Desert, her mother said, where the walls are colored tent silks that flap in the hot wind and there's nothing but camels and desert foxes for thousands of miles. Blah, said Lucy. I think we should go live in outer space, said her brother. We could live in an orbiting space station with metal walls and lights on them that blink and flash and nothing but foozles and quissocks for billions of miles. What are floozles and quissocks? asked Lucy. Outer space things, said her brother. I don't want to live anywhere that isn't my house, said Lucy. And I've left my pig puppet behind. We can get a new one wherever we're going, said her mother. Now let's try to get some sleep. Well, it was chilly at the bottom of the garden and Lucy missed her pig puppet. And do you see what she's thinking about in this picture? Yes, she'll be all alone in that big house with the wolves, Lucy thought. They could do dreadful things to her. What do you think Lucy's going to do? That's right, she's going back into the house. This could be brave or very foolish, depending on how you think about it. Lucy crept back up the garden, quieter than any mouse, and she slipped up the back steps and through the back door and into the house. Lucy was standing there in the little hall by the back of the house when she heard some wolves coming down the stairs. They had been eating jam and toast in front of the television and were coming back for more. Well, quick as a flick of the wing of a bat, Lucy slipped into the wall and she crept through the house on the inside, through the downstairs, up the middle and into the wall of her own bedroom. There was a huge wolf, fat as anything, asleep on her bed. And he was wearing her socks. He had two on his back paws, one on his ear, and one on the tip of his tail. And he was snoring very loudly. <sighs> Lucy pushed open the picture that hung over her bed and she climbed down carefully, quietly, and she picked up her pig puppet from the floor and gave her a hug. Snorkel snork, snored the wolf fast asleep. Quiet as a shadow, Lucy climbed up to the top of her old doll's house, and from there to the top of a chest of drawers, and from there to the mantelpiece, and behind the picture, and back into the walls. It's kind of nice in the walls, thought Lucy. That was close, she got the pig puppet back. Very brave. I was worried sick about you, she told her pig puppet and she squeezed her very tightly. Through the walls crept Lucy and then back into the garden. Where have you been, they asked her. I had to go get my pig puppet, she told them. I told you I would have bought you a new one, said her mother. That one, one that is pink and new and not going gray. Yeah, that's why I went back to get my pig puppet, said Lucy. And she went back to sleep, cuddling her pig. Now the next morning, Lucy's mother and father went to work and Lucy's brother went to school. And Lucy and her father sat down at the bottom of the garden. He practiced his tuba and read travel brochures. And why do you think he's reading travel brochures? Yeah, I think that the parents are thinking they're gonna to have to move to a new house and start a new life. It's all over for them here. We could go and live on a desert island, her father told them all that evening over a dinner of hamburgers, french fries, and little apple pies with astonishingly hot middles, which Lucy's mother had bought for them when she got back from work. 
We could live in a grass hut with grass walls on an island in the middle of the sea with nothing but goats on the island and nothing but fishes in the sea. How many of you think that sounds like a good idea? Yeah. Okay, well, everyone in the family's got an idea. We could live in a hot air balloon, said her mother. There would never be wolves in the walls there. We could live in a tree house at the top of a very tall tree, said her brother. Or we could go back and live in our house again, said Lucy. What, said her father? What, said her mother? What, said her brother? What? said the queen, the queen of Melanesia, who had dropped by to help with some of the gardening. Well, said Lucy, there's a lot of space in the walls of the house. And at least it isn't cold there. What about the wolves, said her father. They are in the house, said Lucy, not the walls. Lucy's mother and father and brother grumbled and frowned, still. None of them wanted to spend another night sleeping at the bottom of the garden. They tried sleeping in the shed, but it smelled too much of lawn mowers and of the fertilizer used for the rhubarb. So they clept back up the top of the steps and through the back door and into the back hall and into the walls. We have to stay quiet, said Lucy. But the wolves were making so much noise that no one could have heard them anyway. The family crept through the walls of the house, peeking out of the eye holes of paintings and through the cracks of things. There were wolves watching television and eating popcorn. They had turned up the television as loud as it would go and they had spilled popcorn all over the floor where it stuck to unfinished slices of toast and jam. There were wolves dashing up the stairs. There were wolves sliding down the banisters. Some of the wolves had put on the family's nicest clothes and they had made big holes in the back of them for their tails. This actually looks pretty funny. The wolves are having a grand time in the people house. And the wolves we're having a party. Ooh, it looks like a wild party too. Oh, oh. They were singing and dancing and telling jokes. One of the wolves was playing her brother's video game and was beating all the high scores. Two of the youngest of the pack of wolves had gotten into the pots of Lucy's mother's homemade jam and they were eating it straight from the pot and smearing their jam hands all over the walls. The biggest fattest wolf of all was playing an old wolf melody on Lucy's father's second best tuba. Mm -hmm. My jam, my walls said Lucy's mother. My video game high scores, said Lucy's brother. My second best tuba, said Lucy's father. Right, we've had enough, said Lucy. There wasn't much in the space between the walls, just a old broken chair. And Lucy picked up a chair leg. You know, I've had just about as much as I can take of those wolves too, said her father and her mother and her brother. Each of her family picked up a broken chair leg. Ready, said her mother. Ready, said everyone else. And, Arrgh! out the wolves. The people have come out of the walls. And when the people come out of the walls, shouted the biggest and fattest wolf, slinging the tuba aside, it's all over. <laughs> Look at how scared they are. So the wolves have their own saying. When the people come out of the walls, it's all over. Round and around they ran, gathering their most treasured possessions. Flee, they shouted, flee, flee, flee. For once the people come out of the walls, it's all over. 
and down the stairs the wolves went, scurrying and hurrying and tumbling over each other in a hurry to get out of the house and get away. Whose idea was this anyway? moaned one of the wolves. The wolves ran and they ran and they ran and they didn't stop running until they got somewhere where there would never be people in the walls who would come out in the middle of the night whooping and singing people songs and brandishing chair legs. And whether they went to the Arctic or the desert or outer space or somewhere else entirely, nobody knows. But from that day to this, the wolves have never been seen again. Now it took the family several days of cleaning up to make the house look anything like it did before the wolves came out of the walls. Ooh, look at all that toast and, and jam all over the carpeting. But eventually everything went back the way it had been before, except for Lucy's father's second best tuba, which had sustained severe jam damage. So Lucy's father sold his second best tuba and bought a sousaphone instead, which he had always wanted. And everything went back to normal. Until Lucy noticed something funny. She heard rustlings, scratchings, squeezings and creakings in the old house. And then one night she heard a noise that sounded exactly like an elephant trying not to sneeze. <laughs> she went and got her pig puppet. Do you think I should tell the rest of them, she said, that we have elephants living in the walls of the house? Mm, I'm sure they'll find out soon enough, said the pig puppet to Lucy. And they did. Uh-oh, that looks like a giant elephant foot smashing a jam sandwich. All right, friends. What a creepy, unusual story. I'll ask you again, what do you think that phrase means? If the wolves come out of the walls, then it's all over. Do you think that that phrase was true? If so, wouldn't the story have ended as soon as the wolves came out of the walls? Or as soon as the people came out of the walls? Mm, something to think about. And maybe try dropping that in one of your next conversations with your family. You know, when the wolves come out of the walls, it's all over and see what they think it means. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed today's story. I'll be back next week with another one. Bye.